Hey everyone, welcome to Garden Fork Radio. You're here with Rick and Eric. Hey Eric, how are you this afternoon, my friend? I'm good. You didn't you didn't say good morning because it's not morning. That's right. This is a rare afternoon um, uh, recording of the uh, the Garden Fork Radio Show. So thanks everyone for listening. Uh, this is if this is your first time, it's uh, the the iTunes audio portion of the Garden Fork uh, Media Empire, I guess you'd call it. Uh, we talk <laughs> about did. kind of an eclectic DIY living stuff. How's that? That's right. And uh, it kind of goes with the seasons, it looks like. Uh, of course, right now, we're, uh, I'm leaning really hard into the uh, the gardening side of it. What about you? Yes, I just... Well, let's talk about gardening. Then I've got to talk about the sap season that just ended. So, Oh, well, let's talk about the sap season, because I saw your video. Um, did I send you a picture? My, or picture, yeah. I, I've, I've seen it on your uh, uh, email that went around. I'm also on Instagram, everyone. If you, I, I, I like Instagram because it's instantaneous. <laughs> So, mm, have you tried any of the new ones like Periscope and um, uh, and Meerkat? No, I have Meerkat, not. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not into live streaming, but um, I do like to take a picture and share it with everybody. Mm. So just search for Garden Fork on Instagram if you're on that. But um, for a while here, I've been talking about making a DIY maple syrup evaporator. And for those that haven't been following Garden Fork, because there's a million how to make maple syrup videos, you... You tap sugar maple trees, not just any maple tree, and then you have to remove the water from that sap down to a certain uh, sugar percentage, and you get maple syrup. So you're a human bee. Right. So most people uh, evaporate the water by boiling it, and you know people will try and boil it on their stove, and that does not work. It'll, it'll take all the paint off your kitchen first before you get syrup, just because of the amount of humidity you're putting in the air. I've been using uh, outdoor deep fryer, turkey deep fryer burners, two of them, and that gets rather expensive with the propane, and I'm surrounded by firewood. Uh, There's trees falling in the woods all the time, and I cut them up for firewood, and I have more, and I have scrap lumber from projects and renovations and things. So I hit upon an idea from Earth Eats. they talked about a homestead that they went to where the gentleman there, I think his name is Mike Bell. I'll put it in the show notes. He took a metal filing cabinet, cut the, where the drawers go, he cut that out and dropped in two or three big uh, steam table trays, you know, food buffet trays. Mm-hmm. And uh, put a chimney on the other end. And I did some enhancements and I, I made uh, a video about it, which would be really fun. And it worked amazingly well. I was really kind of blown away. You have been talking about using a, a filing cabinet to make this for a while, and I never could picture what you had in mind until I saw this. And so it, it really helped. Uh, it looks like a great idea. And I already have a couple ideas for improvements for next year. But the funny part is that you can't it do the improvements and then just do it again all over. You, it's like a pizza oven, you know, oh, I'll improve it and make pizza next week. And no, I got to wait a whole other year. <laughs> <laughs> But it's great because yeah. it gives you something to do in late winter. You're like, you know, you're in the basement or you're in your garage trying to build this rig. And it just gives you something to do instead of sitting around staring at the snow. So uh, it worked out really well. Uh, there are some issues with it. You have to be very careful. But I was surprised at how little wood I burned. I have a whole shed. I stockpiled a shed full of um, probably like a 8 foot by 10 foot shed full of scrap lumber and pallets and some split firewood as well. Mm-hmm. I barely touched it. Wow. Uh, and it was kind of great to be able to burn up a lot of wood that's kind of, you know, you have like two by fours and stuff that are rotted out from a, a fence or something you took apart. Right. And it all burned really well. It burns, uh, lumber bur- burns much better for this and hotter and faster than split firewood. Like you probably put some hardwood logs in there and it kind of killed the fire. You oh, know? really? <laughs> and then the other thing I did was I attached a, uh, a bathroom vent fan to it, so I turbocharged it. And I realized <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, kind of like a rocket. Uh, yeah, it's eater. a jet yeah. engine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's great for starting up the fire, but I realized that I did not, after I got the fire going, I didn't need the extra air. Right. It boiled... It was basically burning off. You're just wasting uh, heat that way. But yeah, 
even well, without this the way, fan. This way you're collecting all that heat, though, so you're getting you know more utility out of every um, BTU of uh, of uh, fire you burn, wood you burn. I didn't get that. Oh, I'm I'm <laughs> said you know, you're you know you're because it's contained now. You're getting more utility out of every BTU of wood you burn. Yes, it was really cool. I was there's I was still more to learn, but um, you could not stand. You know, you have to stand next to it to scoop the sap from tray to tray. And you couldn't stand there more than like two minutes before your pants felt like they were starting to catch on fire. Uh, uh, this is uh, not really in the house or in the uh, garage or anything, is it? No, it's near my woodshed. Um, I made I made basically two videos. I did a regular garden fork video. And then I thought in the manner of um, – there's two guys I know on uh, YouTube. One is I Like to Make Things and the other is Jimmy DiResta. They do these time-lapse videos of them building stuff. Right. And there's no voiceover usually. So I made, I tried to make one of those of me building the thing, you know, cutting open the metal and using my grinder to cut things and screw things. So there'll be one with no voice that just be one of these time-lapse build it videos. And then there'll be the garden fork. Hey, it's Eric. We're making sap video as well. So those will post later this week. Well, I want to see that. I'm uh, getting ready to um, start the, uh, the famous shed project that uh, has been Hanging fire for what three years now? The multi-purpose room. The multi multi-purpose room. It's uh, I've got some plans. I've got a a helper who uh, is really good at building, you know, structures. He he has a, he has real experience as opposed to my theoretical experience, and uh, has saved me a lot of money in um, in saying you know you do it this way, you do it this way, and you know you'll cut these pieces out and whatnot but anyway it's going to be a um, half garden shed half honey house half uh, um, starter room for uh, seedlings and um, I, th- I think it's going to uh, be pretty nice and it's also going to be where i can have a little office and so now i'm trying to figure out how to get uh, uh, wi-fi out to the uh, to the shed because it our house we insulated it super insulated the outside of the house yep smart thing to do but the last layer on the outside of the house is actually a, uh, a reflective um, foil and so that doesn't let much signal get out of the house from the main router and then on the inside of the shed when we build it it's going to have the same kind of thing but the reflection is going to be also on the inside so that uh, any lights and whatnot i put in there uh, as a grow house will uh, will reflect as well and so i'm I may end up just having to run cap five out to the, uh, to the greenhouse, but it's, 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 it's underway. I'm uh, clearing the land now. I've uh, got the, uh, the, uh, those nice wood uh, building blocks that they sell that uh, are really just a godsend for the, the home builder. The, you know, the square blocks that you can, you can uh, put a four by four in or a two by six. Right. And for leveling, they are ideal. You know, you cut yourself uh, maybe a, a six inch, uh, piece of uh, four by four stand it up and put one in each block and then you just level across that yep. and uh and bolt into it and uh you know then cut the tops off and you've you've got a, a level platform they're like cement footers they're about oh they're yeah. about 12 inches square mm-hmm. and they look like a pyramid with the top cut off right and uh, i rescued these from a guy that was tearing up his deck to uh, put in a swimming pool and uh, I had to hand carry them all home, well, me in a wagon. Yeah. So um, I got uh, 34 of them. And uh, because I'm going to probably have at least part of the aquaponics pond inside the uh, grow house so the uh, fish don't freeze, uh, it's, uh, I'm going to need some good support underneath it. So cool. uh, I'm going to have a lot of these things. I think this uh, metal foil shielding is maybe uh – so the government can't figure out what you're doing in your shed, Rick. Not to- uh, it might be. It might be. Of course, I can just walk up and look in the window. Uh, it's going to have lots of windows <laughs> and uh, sliding glass doors. So, uh, uh, you know, instead of barn doors or, or something, because the idea is to have lots of light come in. But, yeah, I, uh, some people had observed that. Um, Gee, the, what's uh, this aluminum foil on your windows, Rick? Y- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a, um, a an aquaponics store here, the only one locally. 
And I'm pretty sure that the uh, the local police just have a a camera trained on that thing all the time, recording license plates coming and going. Guy sells this wonderful grow tent that fits into a closet, and it's you know zips up and it's it's all foil on the inside and uh, reflects lights back and holds the heat in, and uh, makes the whole thing pretty much undetectable from the outside because there's not a lot of light leaking out, although it does have a heat signature, but. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why he needs to keep his tomato plants that secret, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that is cool. Um, I, I wonder if you're going to use all 34 of those cement blocks, you could probably give them away in Craigslist or something. Well, what we don't, uh, use, I'll, uh, I'll be giving them away to somebody locally. There's a guy down the street's got another little patio project going on. So, uh, he might be needing them. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. 34 is an awful lot. But uh, I wasn't gonna let this uh, let them get away. On our uh, our our block association has an email list, and I tried to give away some packing peanuts and bubble wrap, and no one wanted it. And I'm like, I'll just add, I'll keep it for a couple of weeks, and I'll ask again. But I just can't I can't stand throwing that stuff out into the landfill. Yeah, and I'm, there's someone that's gonna need it. So, uh, you know, um, we uh, is yours? Are you using next door? You know, yeah. I signed up for it. Our neighborhood uh, is on that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the one that your association is using? Or? No, we have a Gmail list just for the block. Ah, okay. But is that, is that called Next Door Neighbor? Is that what that's called? Or no, Next it's just Door? called next, nextdoor.com. Ours is incredibly successful and incredibly um, uh, useful. Uh, you can – it's free, first of all, to participate. And the city's involved in our case. And the, oh, uh, that's public great. Public information officer and police department, fire department, they're posting stuff on there. We find out about city budgets and council meetings and, and things at the library. That So, you know, there's information flowing to us all the time. And then uh, if there's a legal problem area, you know, uh, police problems, uh, you know, break-ins. We have, you know, little rash car break-ins. Um, you know, that gets published on there by the people who had the break-ins. Uh, there was one house burglary. And, and so, you know, you find out about that and you can limit it to just your neighborhood. Our, my little neighborhood's called Great Neck Farms. And, uh, or you can expand it out to, um, I think there are 12 or 15 neighborhoods around, right around us that participate as well. And so you just kind of learn everything. You can put a profile up there. You find out who has what, who's doing what, uh, and then selling them. And we've been trying to clean out the garage in preparation for uh, really having a nice clean garage and moving a lot of the junk to the shed. And uh, we've been selling like crazy. And stuff uh, that would never go on uh, Craigslist, we've been selling on next door to our neighbors uh, at just uh, you know really nice prices. And then you get to meet some of these people. Nice. Yeah, we, it's kind of a downside, but yeah. The one issue that uh, some people in my area have is that, you know, we live in a grid in New York City. Right. And I don't know who defined the neighborhoods. I don't know if Next Door did or someone in Brooklyn did, but the way they drew the boundaries of our little neighborhoods, you know, every 10 blocks or so, mm -hmm. don't always exactly make sense. Ah, um, yeah. But you don't know that unless you live there, you know? Right. And there's probably some way to uh, adjust those, you know, if they, you know, get enough participation. I'll have to look into that because, like, you know, the block below us is not included in our next door. And yet we're actually very close with our, the block below us because it's 47th Street, you know. It's like, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so it's, it's just kind of like, why did they do that? Yeah. But, you know, they, they had to do something, I think, to get started. But, yeah. it, but it, it's working out uh, quite well for us, and it's actually made us a, a more tight-knit community. Uh, and then we have been very good about keeping the, um, the crankiness down on the on list. Yeah. And uh, any, anything that gets on your nerves, there's a mute button, and you can mute that entire discussion without missing anything else that's happening on the list. So I like it, that. It, it, it's, it's, it's really quite nice. And you find out things that you wouldn't know otherwise. And uh, now, you know, it's it's really to the point. Does it, you, know, you say, "Hey, does anybody have a uh, a tiller I can rent?" And uh, three or four guys say, "No, but you can come just borrow mine. You know, put some gas in it when you bring it back." Neat. Yeah, I, we have our our little Gmail list, and the problem is, it's and you know, auto emails me everything, and they're like, someone's like, "Oh, I saw a raccoon." 
And then someone else replying, go, oh, really? And I'm like, why Why did, you, why did you just say that? It's just like you're just filling my email inbox with junk, you know? Yeah. So five yeah. different people are like, oh, wow. And I'm like, you don't need to do that. <laughs> yeah. Did you touch it? Don't touch it. You but know? <laughs> with the next door, you can mute it, mute that conversation very easily. So I like yeah. that. Yeah. All right. So, so there was something else we wanted to talk. We're going to talk about beekeeping for a little bit. And some people... Um, uh, don't want us to do that. So we're going to talk about beekeeping for about five, 10 minutes. Okay, guys. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Just some people have emailed and goes, you know, I listen to everything except the beekeeping. So, Oh, well, the bees are important. Well, a bunch of people have emailed me about this new, uh, beekeeping system. I guess you call it called honey flow. I have seen that. It's made the rounds of the talk shows. Um, they had a very successful Kickstarter Indiegogo campaign. Uh, raised a bajillion dollars and it's a beautiful video they shot and I watched it um, and they're really nice people and they really believe in what they're doing and what I'm going to talk about has, is not a ref, not a reflection on them at all um, it's a really neat thing it's basically allows you to harvest honey without having to open the hive and it seems to work on really robust hives fairly well um, from looking at the video and reading a little bit. But the my point with this is actually I'm taking off on an idea that uh, Rusty from honeybeesuite.com, really good bee blog, has written about, it's not an excuse for not taking care of bees. You can't just put bees in a box and, a, and have this rig and expect just to turn on a spigot and have honey like you turn on a beer tap. Right, you know? right. Um, you, you know, you still have to take care of your bees. You still have to open up the hive and monitor them. You have to, you know, if you're varroa mites, you have to treat for those mites, I believe. Um, so it's not a cure all. Um, and a lot of people I think are like, oh, I could just buy a box of bees and put them in this thing and I don't have to touch them at all. I won't get stung and I get all this honey. And that's quite far from the truth, I think. Yeah. Uh, Rick has... Uh, because of all the losses I've had, I, I have decided that uh, I'm going to have to abandon my sort of laissez-faire approach to bees and uh, the survival of the fittest and whatnot that I've kind of been doing. They need some help, and I'm going to have to open the hive and, and manage them more often now. Yeah, so. me as well, myself as well, because I've been trying to use – I've been buying queens that are allegedly mite-resistant you know, and, um, that hasn't worked for three <laughs> years. So I have to be more proactive in our, uh, mite treatments, but it's really co- the honey flow thing. It looks very neat, but I don't, I think it has to be kind of, uh, a very robust hive. That's kind of hard for me right now. I don't have robust hives and I think it's neat because it cre- increases awareness, but it also makes it seem a lot easier than it is. I was boiling down sap, you know, to make maple syrup, and I'm like, this is so much easier than beekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> it, but, you know, the other side of it, too, is that you're still, uh, when you, as I understand it, you know, essentially what they're doing is uh, the f- a two-part frame, and you just kind of crack the frame open a little bit. And right, it, and then gravity just has the honey and flow And gravity out. has the honey. And so you are still disrupting uh, the processes inside the hive. And the bees are going to have to fix it. They're going to have to um, uh, uncap what um, had been done and then refill it and recap it. And so, you know, it's, it's not a cost-free kind of operation. And because you've invested so much in this particular system – this might make it, in the end, more prone uh, to uh, uh, not throwing away your uh, your frames and stuff as, as frequently as you should and switching them out to make sure that you're not getting buildups of, uh, of toxic chemicals and stuff from the, uh, from the wax and just years and years and years of uh, reuse. Yeah. And so, speaking of that, um, Rick, you brought up the, the Be Informed site. Oh, that's right. I, thank you for remembering because I had, I, had list, al- so. <laughs> I had already forgotten. Um, there is a, uh, a national uh, colony loss and management survey. It's being done at beinformed.org, B-E-E-I-N-F-O-R-M-E-D.org. And it's a um, national survey just wanting to know how your winter losses were. So if you're a beekeeper, 
uh, and you had losses this year, if you didn't have losses, uh, there are two parts to this uh, 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 survey. One is uh, how did your bees do? And the other is what kind of treatments are you doing? The uh, survey is completely anonymous if you want it to be. And so if you're doing something a little off the books that maybe hasn't been approved by your state agriculture department or something, and you um, want to confess up to that, it's not going to track back to you uh, because a lot of people are experimenting out there, and we know that. But it's it's really important that beekeepers uh, fill this out and uh, get on the books uh, with their losses and how they did this winter so we can begin through the analysis of data to, to make some sense of what's happening with our bee population. Excellent. So I also we'll, register my bees with the state, which I, I and I think everyone should. But yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, normally I, I participate in a citizen science project with NASA where I weigh my beehives this time of year. And uh, they uh, and then report it back to NASA, actually Langley, uh, uh, just across the water here. And uh, they're using uh, photo images of the advance of, uh, of, of the greening of the earth uh, every spring and correlating that to uh, when the bee began putting on uh, production so they can see how those are matching up and again refine their analysis of uh, when spring is, uh, is, is coming and uh, how, it's, how fast it's advancing north. And so, um, but uh, because I don't have any bees this year, I'll be participating in that. There you go. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. Hey, we have some viewer mail. Oh, I love viewer mail. Ding dong. Interesting. Um, quite a few, you know, there's a number of people that live in Hong Kong that listen to the show and watch the videos. Well. This is from Joel. Big fan in Hong Kong here. I'm an American living here 15 years. Um and he goes on, he has a question about ordering things on Amazon um, and then Garden Fork getting a little finder's fee for it. Because he goes on, it's, it's kind of a long question, but I'll just kind of summarize it here, is that he does a bunch of shopping on Amazon. Then he goes to the Garden Fork site and clicks on our Amazon link and then uh, checks out on Amazon. And I, from what I understand, uh, we don't get any kind of finder's fee for that. What... What the Amazon link is about, it's kind of an organic referral where you're you're starting out on the Garden Fork site. Um, there's a couple links in the sidebar with some ads for things suggested, or if you go to our pressure cooker reviews or a book review or something and say, oh, I want to buy that book. Um, and then you do some shopping on Amazon. We get a finder's fee for that for the next 24 hours, I think, as long as you don't click on someone else's affiliate link for that. <laughs> So if you're doing like regular shopping um, and you don't have to buy anything suggested from our site, if you just click on one of the Amazon ads, um, that embeds a cookie and then whatever you buy is, um, it, we get a little finder's fee for it. So any shopping before you clicked on a Garden Fork link, uh, we, don't, we don't get anything for it. But I appreciate you guys all trying. Yeah, and we appreciate you thinking of it. Um, boy, my, my one Hong Kong story, I... I one, Hong Kong is a fantastic place to visit. I don't know what it's like to live there. It's pretty full of people. But uh, we were waiting to go up to the uh, top of Mount Victoria and take the uh, funicular railroad up to the cable cars or cars up to the top. And we looked in line, and there was this guy and a girl it, behind us, and they were wearing Texas Tech University um, uh, sweatshirts shirts or T-shirts. And I said, you, you got to go ask them, honey. And so I held the place in line. She went and uh, she who must be obeyed, went and asked. And it turns out that they're over on the mainland and they're teaching English to Chinese students. And I thought that was the coolest thing until I realized that there are somewhere there are some Chinese students who think that they're speaking English when they say things like, you know, bug tussle. <laughs> <laughs> they're speaking Texan. They're speaking Texan and they're speaking North Texan, which is kind of a, a strange version of it. <laughs> well, Joel but, goes on and he goes, thanks. I'm a big fan. I watch the videos on YouTube and listen to the podcast to from work on my ferry commute to Hong Kong Island. Okay. I put a review on iTunes already. There we go. That's Joel. Thanks, Joel. That's one of the busiest harbors in the world. It's it's great to sit up high and just watch the uh, harbor traffic come and go. Neat. 
Uh, we heard from Maddie again. Hi, Eric. Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, he went over and looked at some, uh, talked to his neighbors who built raised beds, and he went over and said hello. He said it's a great way to meet other neighbors, which I like. He said they're going to start beekeeping this year and want to start home brewing. They already have the materials, um, and they've signed up for a homesteading class at Case Western Reserve University. Wow. Their kids are in college, and now they're getting antsy. They're such an inspiration to get my uh, body moving. I'll just amend that there. <laughs> anyway, the point is, he writes, he goes, the point is, I think I turned them on the garden fork. It seemed like a good fit, and I asked they check you out online. So there you go. That's that's actually how a lot of people find that about garden fork is kind of, I call it word of mouth, just somebody told someone. And if you guys would tell a friend, you can always forward our email newsletter. How's that for a segue? Yeah, that works. <laughs> um, if you just go to the Garden Fork site, there's a link usually at the top of the page where you can sign up or just go to gardenfork.tv slash news. That's gardenfork.tv slash news. Oh, and if you want to have an Amazon link, it's gardenfork.tv slash Amazon. There you go. Uh, one more cool email from someone named Julian I'd like to read. Is that all right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, Julian says, um, I drive a van for special ed children in the morning, and I always have fun videos on my phone for them to watch. And your tree tapping maple syrup video with your two dogs was a huge hit. <laughs> How's the weather there? Is the video business your job? Well, <laughs> if, if we can make it a business. Yeah. <laughs> How exciting for you guys. It's certainly a job, yes. Yeah. I'm a minister of music at a, at a church. And he works with the band and teaches children to sing and play handbells. He's also a private music teacher and a high school a company. I can't say that word. Company nius. Um, I don't know whose voice that was behind the boiling of the maple syrup video. Was that your wife? I love the interaction. It's so down home in real. In it's so down home in real. So thank you for the entertainment quality as well as the education quality of your videos. So that was cool. Yeah, some kids yeah. watch it on the bus. That's great. You, uh, you, you've always done a good job with the video, and uh, between you and the camera operator, uh, you have some, some hilarious moments there. Yeah. <laughs> I did put up some window blinds myself the other day, and I made a video, which is on I the site. I saw that. I, I loved it when you came up with the, one short piece, you know, the uh, the valance. Yeah, yeah, I messed those up. I, I, I figured out what was wrong, but at least I didn't order them wrong, which that was I was thinking. I was like, uh-oh, I measured wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did um, How'd the color thing work out? Uh, that was for another window. I didn't realize that we had had two different colored blinds for different windows. Ah. But we're well, spoiling so, it for everybody, so. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's true. Well, but, but we didn't find out these details, you know. No. Yeah. But, uh, and then there was the um, uh, the Apple, or what, what, what that uh, rhubarb, that was it. Yeah, Always Dutch get, oven fireplace cooking. You get to yeah. see what happens with that. Yeah, that was interesting. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got to watch that. Uh, we we put uh, you know uh, warts and all. They go up there on uh, on the Garden Fork TV. Sometimes um, uh, the mistakes are almost as uh, informational as the uh, successes. Yeah, people like the mistakes. I think that's good. So yeah, they laugh. They laugh at us. <laughs> I had a uh, an adventure servicing my mower. You know, I I, I followed your advice. I uh, watched your video on how to. Uh, um, to Turn winterize the mower, the lawnmower, yeah. you know, the lawnmower and stuff, and then I reversed that process, and it wouldn't start. And so I had to. Um, uh, I came in here and I watched uh, a, a, a essentially a I think about a fourteen year old kid uh, how to on uh, how to uh, overhaul the uh, carburetor on a uh, a Toro on a Briggs actually it's Briggs and Stratton uh -huh. engine, and um, I got it uh, off and got. It, up and working using his instructions and and uh, and screwed it back on and it went. It took off the first time. I was thrilled. Yeah, the ethanol and gas really kills mowers. Yeah, so. well, I've been using the, um, uh, the you know stabilizer. the stabilizer and stuff, but it's uh, it it worked it worked out really well. So uh, saved me a lot of money. I mean, you know, this time of year you can't find anybody to work on your lawnmower because uh, all the shops are just you know, chock block full. Yeah. All they do is replace the carbs. They don't, I, my understanding is most of them don't rebuild them. They just order a new carb. Really? Boom, done. Wow. Well, I got the, um, the gardens turned over. I've got, uh, my coal plants and then that's C-O-L-E coal plants, uh, you know, collards and, uh, um, cabbages and cabbages, kale. stuff like that. Kale, uh, all planted. And I've got, 
uh, went and did a, uh, I picked over the early arrivals in the greenhouse uh, down at the garden center before they actually put them out for people to, to buy uh, their, their tomatoes and stuff. And so uh, I have those here in the house. And uh, I understand you're working on a, a Sips Bucket video. Yeah, it's one of the uh, Sips. I don't, can't remember what that stands for, but basically it's a self-watering uh, container garden thing. You know, you can you can put it on your patio or on your deck or your balcony or whatever, and um, it waters itself. And it's going to be, I'm trying to use uh, recycled materials in it, so it'll be fun. And I'm trying to make it look nice as well. Yeah, I um, you need to hurry up because I'm I'm about ready to build one or two of those uh, for my uh, my own use here. So I need to see how you do that. I'll be right I'm on also, there. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you can you get on that? Yeah, get them up today. Uh, I'm also. Uh, beginning to, uh, of course, get my secession planting going. Uh, I'm planting a row of, um, of seeds for, um, we only eat, um, uh, costs. Uh, what, what, is, what is that? Lettuce, um, romaine. romaine. Lettuce? It's a, it's a romaine lettuce, you know, nice, hearty, you know, nice crunchy lettuce. And, um, so I'm planting a, a row of five seeds, uh, every other week for the uh, romaine. And, uh, so, I'll have some as the ones are in the garden now. As we eat those, they grow up, we eat those out. Uh, I'll have something to plant in their place. And this is the first time I'm I'm trying to really pay attention this year to what we uh, have eaten in the past and what we really didn't like much in the past. I just grew them because I thought it'd be neat. And um, so, you know, we, we eat lots of lettuce. I'm going to do that. But I'm trying to pace it uh, this time. I also uh, bought um, tomatoes and tomato seeds some are bushes, and uh, bushes all, um, they're nice because they're compact, but they all come at about the same time. And so I'm, I'm trying to mix that in with the, uh, uh, the vining uh, tomatoes, which will produce all summer long. So, cool. So, yeah, just trying to do all that. And then, finally, I'm going to do a, um, I've been looking at this for a couple of years, and I just never got around to it, making a, uh, a potato tower. And, uh, oh yeah, I've seen those. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be about, um, all you need is a, a wire a piece of fencing left over, uh, maybe three foot tall, and about make a hoop out of it, about three foot round, and uh, join it together with cable ties or something, and get a um, uh, go down to the garden center, get a bale of hay, and put about six inches of hay in the bottom. And uh, then get good compost without manure and um, put about six inches of, uh, on that first layer of, uh, of compost down. And then plant your potatoes pieces around the edges. A little more hay, more compost, more potatoes, more hay, more compost. I use three different kinds of t- uh, potatoes, which is going to give me three different kinds of uh, foliage. It's going to come out of the wires uh, on 360 degrees. And so I'm going to have it in the front yard and it's going to be like a post. And all I have to do is keep it watered mm-hmm. cool. and it'll have this nice, you know, color. The vegetation will all be different colors because, uh, you know, the, uh, the red potatoes and new potatoes and I forget what the other brand uh, variety is have different colored vegetation. And then I'm going to put probably cap it with, um, a nice splay of uh, like begonias or something. And so after it begins to fill in, it will have a great uh, presence in the yard. And if it goes the way it's supposed to, uh, and I keep it good and watered, then I'll um, just cut the cable ties in the, in the late summer when the potatoes all die off, when the, the vines die out, and, uh, and just lay it down and harvest them uh, right there. And I should have a lot of, uh, of uh, little new potatoes and, and fairly good size uh, golden potatoes in there sweet so well it's like the gardening and uh gardening and more gardening show on garden well, Fork. you know it's it's that time of year a lot of people listen to us when uh uh they're they're out in the gardens uh, so you know we need to you know let them give them something to think about <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone well thank you for listening thank you for your time rick Oh, my pleasure. I, uh, in fact, I've got to rush out. Uh, tomorrow is trash day, and my uh, anal retentive neighbors have all put out their uh, uh, their, their leaves. Uh, 
their leaves in bags for me to pick up. Uh, if, and if I don't get to them tonight, then uh, the trash guys get them tomorrow and I'll be out. And I'm going to uh, get myself some leaf mulch going. i uh, got my lawnmower going. I'll just pile those leaves up, run the lawnmower over them two or three times, and then um, uh, put them in a little wire cage and let them uh, mold a little bit. Cool. All right, everyone. So thank you for listening again. Uh, if you would write a review on iTunes, that would be cool. That helps us in our ranking over there we like to be ranked so yeah we are pretty rank and uh send us an email it's radio at gardenfork.tv all right radio at gardenfork.tv we'll see you later okay talk to you later my friend bye-bye garden forks theme music is used under license from uniquetracks.com